start the recording. <clears throat> cool. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. How are you? Oh, now that I've figured out how to use this OBS getup, I'm going to keep making some tutorials on different topics I see people searching for. So in this one, I want to expand a little bit on how to create layers in Photoshop. And I have two files open uh, here to, to illustrate that example. So I'm not going to go into too far of details on certain steps, specifically the isolation of this rose, but I'm just going to show you the basics on how to get started isolating objects, creating a layer, and then using that layer in a composition um, to create multiple layers so you can go ahead and kind of use that for your NFT projects. Um, so just getting started, one of the rules of thumb that I always like to you know live by is I duplicate the layer that I'm working on so there is always a backup in case I fuck something up, um, you know, like I do here. So you, that's why you can see there's another layer. Uh, so I'll do that now. But I use the pen tool. I don't know. There's a lot of different ways, and I know Photoshop has changed, um, and there's probably faster ways or there's probably newer technologies, but I prefer the pen tool. Um, it's how I was taught. It is how I keep control of the objects that I'm trying to constrain. And you can still even use it when you're cutting out hair, um, and that's a different topic I'll talk about that some other time that requires alpha masks and stuff but you know just real simply and I've covered this in articles you know you point and click if you've never used the pen tool it is um, based on Bezier curves I'm not going to get into Bezier curves today you can google it um, B-E-Z-I-E-R I think so it's a French term mathematics but it doesn't matter really um, and you can just start drawing you know shapes if you want quick tip uh, you know, you saw that there was a line kind of shooting off. If I was, here, I'll show you what happens. If I wanted to make a point there, what this is going to do is kind of presume the direction <clears throat> and then add that in, right? And it gives us this. And we don't necessarily want that. And you can put another point here if you wanted to and adjust it and adjust all those, those lines. But for me, if I'm just cutting this out thinking like, oh, this is a piece of paper, you can hit option on your keyboard. Uh, I don't know what it is on a PC. I think it's still option. And uh, you can click, and that's how you can get these like, you know, bing bong, real easy peasy, hard edge style. So just do that, go all the way around, bada bing, bada boom, zippity zappity, and let's say there, right? And then make a selection. You uh, control right click, make a selection. You're gonna face this little window here, modal modal overlay, apologies. Uh, and really what it's asking you is, you know, what do you want to do? So rendering is, you know, it's going to be creating that selection uh, around the object. Uh, and feathering is how hard that edge is going to be. And this is really all you're ever going to mess with. Anti-aliased, um, it deals with the edging and the pixels and how the kind of uh, blur fades out it reduces um, visuals, uh, optics, um, and kind of the edge and makes it crisper. I don't remember the exactness, but I think when you turn it off, it makes the edge a little bit harder and the pixel blur is um, more defined. Um, it has to do with crisp, crispness. It's been a long time since I've, I've had to care. doesn't matter. Feathering is what I wanted to talk about, and that is just how hard or soft the edge is. Obviously, a zero feather is going to be straight hard edge. You can think of hard edge style painting. Um, 10 is going to cause more of a blur, you know, when you uh, create the selection or create more of a softer. So experiment, have fun. This operation aspect, new selection, add, subtract, intersect, that's uh, very sim similar to um, uh, like the shape creators in other tools, Illustrator, Figma. What it's doing here, we don't have any other options because there's no selection, but if there was a selection, you know, we could override it, complete, create a completely new one, um, or we could add it, subtract it, or intersect it, and 
you know, obviously adding is adding, subtracting is subtracting, and intersection intersecting is removing um, the uh, overlapping space. In this case, it could be considered uh, a knockout. Uh, that's a term for graphic design. You can Google it. So we hit OK. We have our marching ants. We have our selection. Um, you can see it here. If I did Shift Command I real quick, deleted the background. Well, first I have to select the layer. Deleted the background. You can see what I mean by the feathering of the edge, and that is creating this kind of blur. Uh, if I was to put maybe a solid color behind it, for example, you can see what I mean here. Okay, so going back to if you haven't seen another video, I talked about creating a new document, right? Doesn't matter the size, that's up to you. In that document, whatever that size is, you would create a new layer by hitting the layer icon in whatever graphics editor you're in. And then to start isolating objects, you know, to duplicate obviously the layer, but create a path around that object make the selection, invert the selection, and delete the background, which will leave you with something like this, right? So this was the base for some of my work, and I've used this in a couple different pieces for a couple different generative series that I've done. And, you know, I did this on purpose to save this as an asset and use in the future. I highly suggest that. And a tip and a trick that you should probably consider, a lot of artists, especially ones with gallery representation, you know, they're doing series and variations because, you know, obviously you need to represent your bodies of work, but they explore concepts. So if you see the reason I have multiple roses is because I'm exploring concepts and ideations and, and doing what are called studies. In any event, this is the base of some of the compositions, and I'm going to show you what you can, you know, do and how to create uh, a generative artwork series with layers. Let's not save this. So here we are. I have this rose that we cut out earlier. And what I did was I brought it here into uh, this new document. And I started to kind of create a composition. You know, I explored coloring and backgrounds to get an idea of what I wanted to do. And before I did anything else, you know, I started duplicating, but I started to create the finalized piece that I wanted to create, right? So what I mean by that is I really wanted to bring out texture and create a sharpness and distinction between, you know, the two visual elements here, and, and that's the shadow the, and the midtones and the highlights. Um, and I did that through a combination of things. I used a duplication of the layer and uh, a layer effect and I also use techniques here in the adjustments panel. I don't remember exactly what I did for this particular layer, um, but I do always define, I would usually define objects in that manner. And in this case too, I also reduce the opacity of this particular layer, meaning the light uh, shining through, uh, in order to create an effect of these two layers, because if you see it by itself, it disappears, even though it's technically visible but it's set to a color burn which there's no it's not going to burn through um, white right there's nothing there right maybe i don't know how it will look here yeah you can see it here and you can see it there so that is essentially what this layer is doing and when it's on top of this layer it creates that deeper depth and separation following that to create you know, more layers, what I do is I duplicate. And because I know what I'm trying to achieve, I think through that process. And that's why I have these multiple layers. And that's why these multiple layers exist, right? So in this case, in this one, in this one, and in this one, I was building out the finalized textures and rep, uh, separations of values to create in my mind, what looked like a rose made out of stone, because I wanted to use this as the overall object of my actual composition. So here, I mean, you can see, and then I made a shadow as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
six layers in a group to make one object that was used in an entire series. Once that was done, you know, I could really, I could replicate that and use it in multiple different ways. So from there, that's when shit got really weird because I had the base rows and the base rows was from the original um, party that we were at. That got separated into these textures and that got separated then into colors and masked layers that I had to output, you know, individually for the final uh, randomization. But you can see now how this started to get more complex because I'm using images, I'm using masks, I'm using layer effects, I'm using opacities, I'm using, um, in this case, you can't see anymore because it's happening at that moment. Uh, image adjustments, you know, I'm adjusting hue saturations, but I'm creating all these different variations, all these different layers, and that's how you create the different layers for an NFT uh, project. If you think about those PFP sets, those collectibles that are out there, you know, the, those characters are a base similar to this rose. This fucking train. If I turn these colors off, this is the base character that I've created, this black and white rose. If I turn these colors on, I'm now creating variations, variants. I have multiple, you know, variants of a base color, right? And then I'm also creating layers of backgrounds, which allow me to create even more variants. So, uh, you know, in this op in this one here, right? I have textures, metallic textures. I have colors, and I even use stripes to create, you know, more interesting um, tech. I don't know outputs, right? So. I'm looking through and I'm seeing, all right, in this, in this image, I wanted, how many base layers? I wanted a background, one. I wanted some solid color, two, because the background actually and the texture and the solid color ended up becoming variations. In this one, you could see silver, gold, and black. Those are limited. And then I had a base foil texture which was an overlay to the colors when I created another series of uh, limited variants as well as the stripes. And in this aspect, it's really just you know ratios and outputs, but just the background layers alone, there's three variants. So I had to think through the final piece, what did I want those to look like and how I could make different additions. So then you think, okay, I have the backgrounds, I have the multiple different ways a background can be output. I have the shadow, I have the rows, and that gives me one, two, well, one, two, so f four, five, five main, four, four main layers, really. But each of those layers have subsequent layers. Again, you have to think through a little bit of the composition. That's really how it goes. And I've kind of written about this, but, you know, without visuals, it might be hard to understand. So if you take the rows and you apply it to any type of object in an NFT art, and you're going to use it for um, randomization, you need to think through the variations of that actual object. And that's what I'm trying to illustrate. So I have backgrounds, I have variations of backgrounds that I want to output. How many layers does that require how many variations you know of those backgrounds am i going to make i have rows how many variations of rows do i want to make what does the overall collection look like if you've seen this collection on OpenSea, you can see that i have solids foils um, foils and stripes as backgrounds i have blacks and golds and silvers and, uh, you know, if anybody's watching this, you should probably check your hidden tabs. Uh, there's a few of you who probably have them in your wallets and you don't even realize it. But anyways, think through the collection. If you need to isolate objects, use the pen tool, create the shape, whatever it is. Build upon the base layer. Understand 
what you want to actually create, chop those variants out into their own layers. I'll link to another video where I talk about smart objects. If you need to build smart objects, it's a great way to save on file size and have control outside of the main document. Um, and that's like linking assets in different uh, domains, engineering, design, etc. But yeah, so that's how you create layers in Photoshop. Uh, I hope that was helpful. If it wasn't, let me know. Uh, and otherwise, I'll go ahead and continue to make fancy stuff. And you can find me on the internet, Dane Wasalgo. See you later, alligator.